Welcome back to OK Hobby Time. Today's video is meant as a quick start guide for people who are interested in learning how to resin 3D print miniatures. I'll be taking you through the setup of a new printer, an incredibly clean, beginner-friendly print process, a few key modeling tips, and overall, show you everything that I wish I knew when I was getting started. One of the most common questions I receive is where I get the miniatures that I feature in my videos. Almost all of them are 3D printed and are a part of a large collection that I've been slowly amassing. 3D printing has made the tabletop hobby much more interesting for me as it opened up an entirely new world of creators. The technology has been moving at an incredible pace. The machines keep getting more affordable and the performance better and better. The goal of this video is to share with you what I've learned over the years of printing and to demonstrate that jumping into this hobby does not need to be overwhelming. Thanks to Elegoo who has kindly sent me this Mars 4 Ultra, we'll be able to take a look at the entire process a person brand new to the hobby goes through, starting with the unboxing and setup of a printer. If you're deciding what printer to select as your first, I recommend going with any of the larger brands that have been tried and tested. The bigger popular brands also have entire online communities dedicated to them, which helps a ton when it comes to troubleshooting. Elegoo makes fantastic printers and the Mars line that we have here is great for beginners. The other brand I have experience with and can recommend is Anycubic, which would also be great for anyone starting out. Alright, so you just got your printer, now what? Thankfully there isn't much physical assembly needed when setting up these machines. The most notable thing that will need to be done to get up and running is leveling the build plate. This is slightly different with each printer, but for the most part will require loosening the screws on the build plate placing the supplied sheet of leveling paper on the screen, and setting the Z level to zero. Once the build plate is leveled, the screws can be secured, tightening each one lightly, then going back and tightening them all the way one by one. The build plate can now be returned upwards and the resin tank can be placed into the printer, securing the bolts on either side. Something I recommend doing when setting up a new print station is getting some sort of silicone mat with raised edges to place your printer on. These will be very helpful with keeping your countertop clean and making it very simple to clean up any spills. Before we start handling the resin, it's good to cover some basic safety tips. First, you want to place your printer in a low traffic location with sufficient ventilation. My location of choice is my basement, right under a window. Always wear nitrile gloves to protect your skin from direct contact with resin. Additionally, wearing a 3M mask can protect you from inhaling harmful fumes, especially in enclosed spaces. If possible, open a window to allow fresh air circulation, and use an air purifier with a HEPA filter to help reduce fumes and airborne particles. Following as much of these precautions minimizes health risks and keeps your workspace safe. Okay, with that all covered, it's now time to add our resin to the printer. I'm using one of Elegoo's resins, which was recommended with this printer. Using a third-party resin might provide better results, but it could also require more dialing in on the back end, which isn't as beginner friendly. Before pouring the resin into the tank, a good shaking is required to get rid of any separation. Just make absolutely sure the lid is screwed on tight to avoid any accidents. Even though we're not making contact with the resin at this point, it's still a good idea to wear gloves just in case. Most printers will have a max fill line. Be careful not to pour over this, otherwise you risk overflowing the tank once the build plate lowers in. It's important to be as clean as possible here. Giving the resin bottle a little twist at the end prevents drips. I also sometimes like to use a piece of paper towel to dry up the rim of the bottle to make absolutely sure the bottle is drip free. I'm pretty cautious about keeping these bottles clean so that they can be handled without necessarily wearing gloves. When getting used to your printer, it's important to make a mental note of what parts of the printer can touch resin and which parts can't. The parts that touch resin include the interior of the resin tank, the bottom of the build plate, and the top of the build plate when it submerges. Everywhere else should remain clear of resin. Maintaining this cleanliness is important for creating a safe work environment and preventing your machine from becoming a mess. If an accident was to occur, don't stress, it happens. But it's important to keep in mind that water and soap does not work when trying to clean up your typical resin. You will need 99% isopropyl alcohol, otherwise known as IPA, to break it down. So with the printer leveled and loaded with resin, it's ready to print a miniature. There's lots of sources of miniature files, some of which are free, but be careful with these since the quality is not always there, and more importantly, they often don't come pre-supported. If you're just starting out, I'd highly suggest MyMiniFactory.com. This site is full of high-quality supported minis from talented creators across the world. A large part of the fun when it comes to 3D printing is the ability to find what resonates with you. There are so many talented creators out there with all different themes and styles. If there's a particular creator whose work you really enjoy, a tip for saving money would be to check if they have a Patreon. 
Most of them do, and if you subscribe, you get a monthly release of models deeply discounted compared to the full cost on my mini factory. Also, once you're a patron, most creators offer a discount code for older releases in their My Mini Factory shop. I also recommend looking out for frequent sales on My Mini Factory, which run throughout the year. Between Patreon and this, you can save some serious money by printing your own miniatures. Regardless of where you get your models, the format will be an STL file of the digital model. But we can't just place this on our USB. It needs to be sliced up first and turned into a file that the printer can read. Each printer has their own preferred slicing software, and as someone starting out, I'd suggest sticking to the manufacturer's recommendation for now. For an Elegoo printer, this means we'll be using ChutuBox. Although while editing this video, I've noticed Elegoo has recently announced their own slicing software that would be coming soon, called Satellite. Okay, let's talk printer settings. I feel like this part of the process always scares people, but the truth is, it's much more forgiving than you may think. In fact, on my very first printer, I didn't touch a single setting, mostly out of naivety, but was printing fine with no issues. That being said, the settings that would be a good idea to calibrate are your exposure times. The bottom exposure is easy to troubleshoot. If you're finding your models are really stuck to your build plate and hard to remove, then you can play with lowering this number. But be careful not to lower it too much, otherwise you risk models not sticking to the build plate at all. Next is the exposure setting for the normal layers, the ones that make up the majority of the print. The goal here is to get the resin as hard as possible while still maintaining accuracy. To do this, there's a bunch of tests available that can help measure exposure, each with its own instructions on what to look for. So choose your favorite, or do what I did and print multiple. Here you can see my first cones of calibration test failed, so I made a small adjustment, reprinted, and got a successful result. The rest of the settings primarily deal with the way the printer lifts and retracts the build plate. Default settings should be fine here, but if you want to be cautious, you can tweak some of the numbers like I have them here, sacrificing a bit of speed to help guarantee a successful print. The file we downloaded is high quality and comes in a pre-supported format. This means we only need to drop the file in and click slice. This is crucial for a beginner because it avoids needing to support the miniatures yourself and essentially turns it into a drag and drop process. Once done, we can place this new file onto our USB. Now it's just a matter of plugging in the USB into the printer, finding the saved file, and clicking print. Eventually, the print will finish, and if everything went well, a completed model should be stuck to the underside of your build plate. If you know you'll be printing again soon, a helpful tip that saves a bunch of time is to leave your resin in the tank. These printer lids are UV protective, so there's no risk to the resin hardening. If you do this, make sure that you give the resin a good stir before printing again with the plastic tool that was provided with the printer. Remember to never use the metal scrapers on the printer vat's film. I also like to double up on lids to ensure there's no lingering resin odors. This one was 3D printed on my FDM printer. There's going to be scenarios where you'll need to empty the resin vat, such as when you want to clean the film or if you won't be printing for a while. To do this, I recommend getting a flat metal funnel that you can rest on the resin bottle. Paired with the plastic scraper, you can easily get all your resin back into the bottle without making a mess. If you have a filled print and you're just trying to clean the resin that accidentally cured to your vat's film, an easier way would be to use a vat cleaning tool. Place an old support on a clear side of your vat and let the printer expose the entire screen. You'll be able to peel this off with any other cured resin that may have been stuck on. It's at this point we'll need to clean our print with a solvent such as 99% isopropyl alcohol. Thankfully, there's an easy way to do this without creating a giant mess. One of my biggest recommendations for resin 3D printing is investing in a wash and cure station. Each major manufacturer makes one of these machines and they all work similarly. They streamline the resin 3D printing process by giving you a way to wash your prints and afterwards, cure them with UV light. When people complain about 3D printing being messy, it's usually because they don't have one of these machines, or if they do, they're not using them to their full capability. I often see people only filling wash stations part way, which requires removing your model from the build plate when they're covered in resin and tossing them into the bottom of the tank. Not only is this an easy way to lose small pieces, but it also requires you to dirty a pair of gloves. My preferred method, and the recommended way to use these machines is to fill them up enough so that you can place your build plate with the models attached directly into the wash station. So a couple caveats to this. You'll need to fill your wash station up quite a bit to accommodate this technique. You'll also need to double check that your wash station can actually fit your build plate. Placing the build plate directly into the wash station will prevent the need to handle the uncured models directly, which is a massive pro for anyone who wants to prioritize cleanliness. And as a bonus, this will clean your build plate simultaneously. I usually wash my models for about 5 minutes, 
I find that this duration does a good job of removing all uncured resin from the miniatures. Once done, I remove the build plate and let it dry for a few minutes on a piece of paper towel on top of a silicone mat. An optional tip and something I'd recommend is to use a second container of isopropyl to dunk your models in before the final cleaning in the wash station. This two-stage system of a dirty and clean container will ensure the models finish cleaning without any residue and will save on isopropyl in the long run. Whether you did a single or double stage cleaning, you're going to want to let your models dry completely before moving to the next step. It's time to remove the models from the build plate. Most printers will come with a metal scraper tool to help with this. If you're finding it difficult to remove miniatures with this tool, I suggest replacing this with a razor blade scraper. This tool is much sharper, allowing the blade to slide under the models easier and popping them off, and if not, at least creating an easy gap for the larger tool to get in. Once the miniatures are off, I usually give the build plate a couple of scrapes to clear off any residue or metal burrs. This just ensures that the build plate is ready to go for my next print. Also, don't worry about tiny scrapes and general wear and tear on the surface. It's going to happen naturally and does not affect printing. Most miniatures need supports to print that will have to be removed. Although the excess resin is washed off, the miniatures are still not cured. This means gloves need to be worn while handling the miniatures to avoid resin coming into contact with skin. I find that larger models can easily have their supports pulled off with no additional tools. But for small miniatures that include details such as thin weapons, it's best to use a pair of cutters to avoid accidental breakage. Once the supports are off, the miniature can be cured. The wash and cure station takes care of this task easily. Two minutes in the UV light is what I like to use for regular sized miniatures. This can increase or decrease based on the thickness of the miniature. Curing the miniature hardens the resin and makes them now safe to touch. This is also why most people choose to remove the supports beforehand, since removing them after the resin hardens makes it more difficult. That being said, an alternative to this method, and a preferred process of mine, would be to cure the miniatures before removing the supports. The benefits of doing this is entirely avoiding having to touch the uncured miniature and being able to use your bare hands for more fidelity when removing the supports. If you choose to go this route, make sure to place the cured miniatures in a dedicated container of hot water to soften up the plastic before removing the supports. This will almost negate the difference of removing the supports after they've been hardened. Another bonus benefit to this method is being able to dispose of all the support waste in your regular garbage. With this process, you'll be able to print miniatures without getting a single drop of resin on your gloves. Honestly, if there's any one takeaway from this video, it's that the post-processing part of resin printing can be much cleaner than what is commonly seen online. I find that having a clean and efficient print process makes resin 3D printing much more enjoyable, which also results in me printing over and over again. Some miniatures that you print will need to be assembled. The typical plastic glue doesn't work here as it has no effect on resin. What we'll need instead is CA glue, better known as crazy glue or super glue. If I ever run into an issue where I'm not getting a good bond or need something to dry immediately, CA glue accelerator works like magic. A tip for creating an incredibly quick and strong bond would be to coat one side in accelerator and the other side in glue. Just make sure you're accurate when combining the parts because there's zero working time once the two components come into contact. Alternatively, you can glue the parts together and while holding the model, apply the accelerator once you're happy with the positioning. Another modeling tip that helps finish off a 3D printed mini is to invest in some proper bases rather than 3D printing them. This will help blend your models seamlessly with the rest of your collection. With that done, we successfully 3D printed some awesome miniatures for the tabletop. These can be primed and painted exactly like any other model, and once finished, are indistinguishable from the rest of your collection. Finally, I want to show you what this looks like when it's all put together to demonstrate how easy and quick 3D printing miniatures has become. Let's recap everything we went through by printing some orcs by Titanforge miniatures.
Before I go, I want to leave you with the key takeaways that I'd consider very helpful for anyone jumping into this hobby. First one being finding a good small to medium sized printer as they are more beginner friendly and also make post processing easier. Stick with standard gray resins, you can get fancy afterwards once you learn to dial this in. Make sure you look into the safety side of handling resin and ensure you have the right environment that can properly ventilate your print area. Start out with miniatures that are pre-supported well. This often means spending a few dollars but look out for sales and join Patreons. Calibrate your exposure settings by using test models like the one shown here. If you're printing continuously, leave the resin in the vat to avoid major cleanups. Just make sure to give the resin a stir before printing again. Filled prints that are stuck to the FVP can be cleaned using the vat cleaning option, found on most printers. And finally, post-processing of prints. Despite what is commonly seen online, it's possible to resin print without getting a single drop of resin on your gloves and have significantly reduced hazardous waste. Not only does this create a safer work environment, but also makes the hobby way more enjoyable. And there you have it, a quick start beginner's guide to resin 3D printing miniatures. It's an incredibly fun and fulfilling hobby. Just make sure you're safe, have patience, and do your research. And don't stop at this video, there's a ton of great resources nowadays to learn more, especially if you're interested in specific topics that were only briefly covered here. And that wraps up this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.